It's the Real News Network, and I'm Greg Wilpert. Ever since Jeremy Corbyn took the British Labour Party by storm in September of 2015, taking it in a more progressive direction, the old leadership has tried various tactics to try to delegitimize Corbyn in order to retake power. One of the main tools the Conservatives in the party have used is to blame Corbyn and his supporters of anti-Semitism. Corbyn and the progressive momentum uh, movement within the Labour Party openly demand an end to Israel's occupation in Palestine. Conservatives within the Labour Party exploit the fact that not everyone understands the difference between the state of Israel and the Jewish people, and therefore frame every criticism of Israeli policy as anti-Semitism. Since then, many Labour uh, Party members have been kicked out of the uh, kicked out of the party over accusations of anti-Semitism, some of them justified and some not. Also, after Al Jazeera published a documentary exposing the influence of the Israeli lobby on the Labour Party's internal politics, the Labour Party has been severely weakened. This week, the Labour Party published a new document in order to lay the issue of anti-Semitism to rest. Pro-Israeli groups immediately attacked the new document because it does not stipulate that criticism of Israeli policy is a form of anti-Semitism. Joining me now to discuss this is Moshe Machover. Moshe is a member of the Labour Party who, has, who himself was kicked out of the party last year over false allegations of anti-Semitism, although he himself is Jewish. He was reinstated into the party after a major scandal ensued. Thanks for joining us today, Moshe. It's very nice to be with you, but I have to correct you on a couple of points. First of all, uh, I was not expelled on the grounds of anti-Semitism. When I was expelled on a completely different uh, charge, they uh, included in the letter expelling me an insinuation of anti-Semitism. This is quite typical because a, a, a lot of the time people have been uh, uh, maligned uh, as anti-Semitic, but <laughs> no, no proof whatsoever. Secondly, it is not only uh, the conservatives within the party that are attacking him. It is a, a sort of uh, a joining together of conservatives and Zionists within the Labour Party, as well as the, the uh, conservative Jewish establishment, the self-proclaimed leadership of the Jewish community here, uh, and uh, also forces without, I mean, like the, the whole establishment. And thirdly, it has not weakened the Labour Party, despite their best efforts. Uh, the Labour Party is going strong, and in fact, uh, although the attacks uh, intensified uh, uh, before uh, the uh, latest uh, elections to uh, local elections to various local councils and so on, Labour did very well in those those elections. So uh, uh, these these attacks have been so far frustrated, but they are going on. Okay. Well, thanks for those clarifications. Um, so regarding the document, do you think that the Labour Party took the right step by adopting this new document? And do you think that it will lay the issue of anti-Semitism to rest eventually? Also, how likely is it that the Labour Party will stand by the document and not change it in the face of uh, future pressure from its right wing? The answers are yes, no, and maybe. Uh, uh, yes, it has taken the right step in the right direction, although uh, uh, the uh, version that it uh, uh, adopted of you know, a, a sort of code of conduct regarding the issue of anti-Semitism is not perfect. It has uh, uh, one or two flaws which we can discuss later. Uh, uh, your second question was, uh, how how likely it is to uh, uh, stop the the uh, attacks on it it will not stop the attacks on it because they are they are motivated by uh, uh, the animus of uh, conservative anti corbinites within the, the the party and in uh, without the party in in, in british society and unfortunately, I think uh, after adopting a, a fairly good document, which is an advance to uh, on what the, the uh, pro-Zionist, pro-Israel lobby demanded, uh, it is better than what they demanded, uh, it left the back door open because it, it uh, capitulated 
to uh, uh, the pressure by saying that they will go on discussing with the uh, 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 pro-Israel groups, essentially the Israel lobby, uh, how to improve the formulation that they adopted. So they are actually uh, inviting the uh, uh, Israeli lobby to continue its pressure on the on the Labour Party instead of saying, "Look, this is what we have adopted. That's it. We we stand by it." They uh, left the back door open for further pressure. So um, regarding some of the things that the document actually says, um, it considers, for example, that anti-Semitism to be a form of racism. This has been a clear message by progressive Jewish organizations around the world, which are working to build coalitions with other groups targeted by racism, such as Muslims and African Americans and other groups. Um, yes. Why do Israeli groups attack this point so severely, insisting that anti-Semitism is actually not a form of racism? Well, uh, uh, I don't think this is a major point in their, in their uh, uh, attacks. It is maybe an undercurrent because uh, the, the uh, view of the, the uh, pro-Israel lobby is that anti-Semitism is something sui generis. It is not like any other uh, form of racism or it, it, it's, it's something, you know, like uh, uh, just as they, they uh, uh, like to claim that the, the Holocaust, uh, the genocide in effect of Jews under the Nazi regime in Europe is not a, a, a genocide. It cannot be compared or even, even discussed uh, in conjunction with uh, other uh, cases of genocide, but it is just something on its own. It's a kind of uh, object outside uh, general history, shouldn't be discussed in, in, in conjunction with any other genocide. This is, you know, it's to make Israel, in effect, something special and, and uh, uh, Israel supporters something uh, special. This is, this is part of their ideology. Uh, but but this is not the the major line uh, of their attack. The major line is that uh, while adopting the very faulty and uh, ambiguous definition of uh, anti-Semitism uh, uh, associated with the IHRA, the International Holocaust Remembrance Association, uh, Labour failed to adopt some of the examples that have been appended, associated with that definition, uh, which uh, 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 explicitly uh, conflate uh, anti-Semitism with uh, anti-Zionism or uh, uh, disgust attack on, on the Israeli Zionist regime. And failing to use the, 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 the for, for those uh, 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 various parts of the Israel lobby and the, the conservative establishment inside and outside the party, the main point is to ring fence Israel and the Zionist project of colonization against criticism. They are not really interested in anti-Semitism per se. This is not, this is not why they have, they have made all this, you know, uh, I I immense public campaign, with part of which it is uh, motorized or driven from Israel via the uh, Israeli Ministry of Strategic Affairs, so-called. Uh, they, you know, they're, they're not really interested in the same anti-Semitism. For example, they 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 uh, don't argue against Israel's relations with the most anti-Semitic regimes in Europe uh, at the moment. While we are speaking, I think. Orban, the anti-Semitic uh, uh, prime minister of Hungary, is visiting Israel on very friendly terms. So uh, uh, they don't criticize this. They, they are not, uh, I think, not really interested in anti-Semitism per se. They are interested in using or abusing accusations of anti-Semitism in order to ring fence Israel and its project of colonization. I want to turn to uh, what effect this document might have within the party, though. Uh, Britain played a major role in creating the colonial legacy uh, in Israel-Palestine uh, with the Balfour Declaration and with military support for the state of Israel. 
but uh, there are also member, Palestinian members of the Labour Party, such as Gada Karmi, uh, who demands a voice in the party just like everyone else. Does this new document protect against the creation of a different kind of racism or discrimination that is the silencing of Palestinian voices in the party? I don't think they can silence the, the, not only the Palestinian voices. It is not just the Palestinians. It is the, the vast majority of the membership of the Labour Party that is supportive of Palestinian rights and is very critical of Israel. This was evident in the uh, party conference uh, last year, in which uh, uh, the, the greatest applause uh, uh, during the speech that was made by the leader of the party, Jeremy Corbyn, the greatest applause, the most enthusiastic, was a sentence in which he uh, supported uh, the rights of the Palestinian people. So it's not just the Palestinian people inside the party, there are very few, I mean, relatively speaking. Uh, uh, listen, I mean, the Labour Party following the, the uh, accession to leadership of, of Jeremy Corbyn is a huge party. It is, it is, uh, 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 its membership is about 600,000 people in, in a country like Britain with roughly a population of 60 million people. It is a huge party. It is the largest party of any color in Western Europe. Uh, and its majority is vastly uh, 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 pro-Palestinian uh, there were several uh, 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 Jewish people who made uh, speeches at the conference last year uh, in support of Palestinian rights and in opposition to uh, Israeli policies, and they got en en enormous applause. So uh, uh, it, 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 within the party, the, the, the pro-Zionists and the Israel worshippers are in a small minority. Uh, finally, I just wanted to ask you about um, the uh, the role that all of this plays in uh, British politics. That is, the Labour Party, you know, recently published a wide-ranging platform in issues ranging from education to defence, from environmental responsibility to health policy. How important is the issue of Israel-Palestine to British foreign policy, and how important is the issue of anti-Semitism to internal Br British politics? Uh, that it takes such a uh, major part of the political debate within the Labour Party. To, to be honest with you, it, 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 I think the general British electorate is, is, is not very much concerned, one way or the other, with uh, uh, Israel-Palestine. Perhaps it is not concerned enough, in the, uh, it should be concerned in the proper way. Uh, it is not a major issue in, in uh, sort of the minds of most uh, uh, you know, British people. It is artificially... Uh, fomented, it is artificially raised by uh, the, the uh, said pro-Israel uh, lobby within the, the party and the, the uh, right-wing Jewish uh, self-proclaimed leadership. Okay, well we're going to have to leave it there for now. I was speaking to Moshe Machover, activist and writer on Israeli-Palestinian issues. Thanks for having joined us today, Moshe. It's a pleasure. And thank you for joining the Real News Network. Also, I'd like to remind you we are in the midst of our summer fundraiser and need your help to reach our goal of raising $200,000. Every dollar that you donate will be matched. Unlike practically all other news outlets, we do not accept support from governments or corporations. Please do what you can today.